Hey students, this is Adarsh, and let's study about fiber to fabric. That is the first chapter of your chemistry. And before going into deeper explanation, uh, let's revise a little bit uh, about this topic. What we have studied in class six, we all know that clothes uh, clothes are our basic requirements, and wearing clothes is solely the characteristic of human beings. The first kind of clothing was made of big leaves. and barks of the trees then people started using animal skin and fur of different animals to cover their body and this used to go on for years later people started looking for new methods of making clothes slowly and gradually they learned weaving and stitching they made lighter clothes by using barks and fibers of the trees now these are some importance of clothes first is they protect from heat second they protect from cold and third they make us look nice and decent and one point should also be included that we need our clothes actually according to the climate of the place where we live for example if any person live in cold place or where their temperature is low so he will prefer to wear woolen cloth so that he may become so that he may remain warm and if any person lives in a place where there is a higher temperature then he would prefer to wear a cotton cloth so uh, whatever clothes we are wearing uh, are mainly or are directly related to the climate of the place where he or she lives now what is fiber a material that is available in the form of thin and continuous strand is called as fiber now there are two types of fiber mainly two types that is natural fiber and man made fiber or synthetic fiber now what is natural fiber the fiber which are obtained from plants and animals are called as natural fiber examples are cotton jute silk and wool and other is man made fiber or synthetic fiber the fiber that are synthesized in labs are called as man made fiber examples are nylon and polyester and etc now natural fibers are again divided into two categories that is plant fiber and animal fiber so it is very simple students the fiber that are obtained or that we get from plant are called as plant fiber for example cotton jute and flax and if you remember we studied about cotton jute and flax in class 6 and the animal fiber is the fiber that we get from animals now the example is silk and wool and in this chapter we are mainly going to study about these two fiber that is wool and silk now wool is obtained from sheep goat yak camel llama and alpaca and silk is obtained from silk worm so these are some pictures of the animals by which we get wool sheep goat yak camel llama alpaca now wool wool is obtained from the fleece now what is fleece fleece is the thick hair that is present on the body of these animals so wool is obtained from the fleece that is hair of sheep goat camel yak rabbit llama alpaca and other animals these animals have a thick coat of hair on their bodies because the hair traps air and air is a poor conductor of heat so thick layer of hair keeps their body warm and protects them from harsh cold for obtaining wool animals are reared and then their hair is cut and processed into wool now fleece and wool bearing animals fleece and wool bearing animals like sheep goat camel yak etc bear mainly two types of hair that is coarse hair and fine soft under hair now fine soft hair is found close to the skin in such animals 
the fine soft under hair of animal like sheep goat etc is called as fleece animals having fine soft hair fleece on their body are called as wool bearing animals now let's study a little bit about animal wool now many breeds of sheep are found in india and as we all know that sheep also gives milk and meat it also provides milk and meat in addition to wool but they are mainly reared to obtain wool in different parts of the world sheep wool is most common wool but apart from apart from sheep there are some other animals also that provide or by which we can obtain wool now angora wool is obtained from angora goats of jammu and kashmir that is soft wool used for making shawls angora goats are found in hilly regions such as jammu and kashmir now pashmina wool is obtained from pashmina goats yak wool is obtained commonly in tibet in ladakh and alpaca and llama found in south america also give wool camel hair is also used as wool so what we studied that apart from sheep there are other animals also uh, from which we can obtain wool now sheep are reared in many parts of our country like jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh uttaranchal sikkim arunachal pradesh haryana punjab rajasthan gujarat etc so these are the name of some states where sheep are reared now sheep feed on grass and leaves they are also fed with a mixture of pulses corn jowar oil cakes and minerals in winter sheep are kept indoors and fed on leaves grains and dry fodder some breeds of sheep have thick hair on their body which yield good quality wool good quality wool in large quantities they are selectively bred to get sheep of good breed in other words the sheep are chosen for their special characteristics like soft under hair and this process is called as selective breeding now there are mainly six steps involved in the processing of wool first is shearing then scouring then sorting then burr separation then dyeing and then spinning now first step is shearing the fleece hair of the sheep is removed from its body along with a thin layer of dead skin by using machine now there are some modern machines there are some modern shavers by which the process of shearing is done the process of removal of the fleece from the animal is called as shearing the sheared skin with hair is washed in tanks to remove grease dust and dirt the process of washing the sheared wool in hot water followed by drying is called as scouring so as you all know the wool or the hair or the fleece that we obtain contains grease dust and dirt so we need to remove this so that's why the process of scouring is done next is sorting the hairy skin is sent to a factory where hairs of different textures are separated the process of separating hair of different textures from the fleece is called as sorting next is burr separation the small fluffy fiber called burrs are separated from the hairs and are again washed and dried now the next step is dyeing as you all know the natural hair of sheep is white brown or black so in order to get desired color the raw fibers are dyed in different colors now then spinning the raw fiber are then straightened by the process of carding now carding is the process by which raw wool fibers are separated 
and prepared for spinning. So the raw fiber are then straightened, combed and rolled into yarn. They are then spun and woven into fabric. So this is the picture of the modern machine or the shaver by which the process of shearing is being done. Now there are two types of yarn that is long yarn and shorter yarn. The long yarn threads are usually knitted to make sweaters, mufflers, caps and socks and the shorter yarn thread are woven into fabrics. So these are the picture of showing wool and wool and yarn and also the fabric. So wool is used for making warm clothes such as sweater, cap, shawl, gloves and blanket etc. Wool is also used in making carpets and upholstery. Now the next animal fiber which we have to study is silk. Now silk fiber is obtained from the cocoon of the silk worms or silk moth. Silk moth lives on the leaves of mulberry plants. Now, different types of silkworm produce different types of silk in terms of luster and texture. For example, tussar silk, moga silk, kosa silk and etc. are produced by different types of silk moth. So, mulberry silk, but out of these, mulberry silk is the most common silk moth. Now, sericulture. The rearing of silkworm for obtaining silk is called as seri. Culture. So here is the diagram of the silkworm. Now let's study a little bit about the history of silk. Silk was discovered in China around 3500 BC. Silk became a prized pro, uh, possession because of its fine quality and luster. Now originally it was used by emperors only. It was through trade that silk spread to other parts of the world over the over a period of time silk was a staple item of trade during ancient times due to this the ancient trade routes which linked china to other parts of the world are called silk routes now let's study about the life cycle of silk worm now mainly there are four stages in the life cycle of silk moth that is egg larva pupa and adult now it starts with how uh, silk uh, female silk moth lays egg then after about 14 days eggs are hatched into larva that is called as caterpillar and that then it grows into pupa and this pupa starts secreting fiber that is made up of protein and weaves the fiber around itself completely. This covering is called as cocoon and live in the cocoon for some time. After coming out of cocoon, it grows into silk moth. So these are the pictures that are showing the life cycle of silk moth. So first of all the female silk moth lays egg and from these eggs caterpillar or larva are hatched out. Later on the caterpillar starts secreting protein around them that is called as cocoon. The silk worm changes into pupa stage inside the cocoon and then turn itself into a moth. That which escapes by making a hole through the cocoon. Now here are the pictures of mulberry tree. This is mulberry tree and this is the leaf of mulberry tree on which the silk worm feeds. Now uh, here are the following steps that are involved in the processing of silk that is first is rearing of silk worm then it is reeling then it is dying and it then it is ultimately followed by spinning and weaving so these are the different pictures that are showing the processing of silk now rearing of silk worms now the female silk moth lays egg 
x are stored over a clean cloth or paper strip then the x are warmed to a suitable temperature the x hatch into larva that is called as caterpillars or silk worm now the silk worm are kept in bamboo trays and and feeds on mulberry leaves and grows in size after about 30 to 40 days the silk moth stops eating and begins to spin cocoons cocoons get hardened because of exposure to air inside the cocoon the silk worm develops into silk moth so here are the different pictures that are showing the rearing of silk worm then next comes reeling of silk now cocoons are collected and then they are ultimately put in boiling water now once the spinning is complete the cocoons are placed into boiling water to kill the developing moths before they can emerge and destroy the silk and loosen the filaments the cocoons are carefully unraveled by the process called reeling or filature and then filaments are placed on large wheel so the process of taking out the silk thread from the cocoons is called reeling and reeling is done by machines and here are the different pictures which are showing the processing of silk and as you can see in this picture uh, this person is putting cocoon in the boiling water to kill the silk moth now the next step is dyeing spinning and weaving so what happens in dyeing the silk fibers are then dyed in the different color and what is the purpose of dyeing so that we may get the desired color in the yarn or in the fiber the next spinning and weaving the silk fiber are then spun into threads and woven into different types of silk cloth that is fiber and here are the pictures that are showing the process of spinning and weaving of silk and in this picture you can see a particular machine this uh, machine is known as loom in which the process of weaving is done and next comes the uses of silk as we all know silk is a costly fabric it is used for weaving cloth especially traditional dresses in india like saree kurta and etc silk and silk had always been prized for its luster and fine quality and the countries which produce silk on a large scale are india and china the next comes the occupational hazards of silk industry now the workers who process raw silk are exposed to a fine dust derived from the gum that binds the strand secreted by the silk worms so they often suffer from respiratory diseases such as occupational asthma and bronchitis and also since the workers have to put their hands inside the boiling water while they put cocoons inside so they often suffer from blisters and injuries so certain safety and health measures needs to be taken uh, for example control of temperature humidity and ventilation is one of the most important factor in silk industry so thank you for watching